Hi everyone, James here from Akamai Cloud Computing. I'm here at the Tech Expo show at the London Excel Exhibition Center. I'm sat with Billy, so Solutions Engineering Manager for Akamai Cloud Computing. And Billy, you've just, you're fresh off the stage for uh, delivering a, a really interesting talk. I enjoyed it, I think the crowd did too. All around portability. So, first off, how did it go? How did you find it? I think it went well. It was more a talk on the why versus the how. So I think it turned on some light bulbs and people walked away with some homework to do on considerations of how portable are they and what are changes they could maybe make and how can they be more efficient with their cloud usage. Yeah, there were some stats. Was it the was it 30%? Was it 30% is cloud waste? Is that right, 30% of cloud resources? I mean, I saw some light bulbs turning on in the audience. Mm, yeah, roughly one third, based on a few different studies over the past couple of years and other analysis based off of them. Yeah, more or less. So really, this um, it was quite a sort of high level conceptual thing, this idea of being portable, making more of your resources and avoiding avoiding that that waste element. So in so in real terms, I mean, some of the so, so the partners potentially watching this from MSPs, uh, digital agencies, software development agencies, probably aren't fans of marketing buzzwords either, like you and I. So portability, can we drill it down to what exactly does that actually mean? If if I want to embrace this idea of portability, I bought into it. It sounds great. I don't want to waste my cloud resources. You know, how do I kind of how do I start that journey? Well, first off. I don't even feel like portability is that much of a buzzword okay. since it's actually kind of the unpopular kid in the space and we're trying to make it more popular because we think it's good for your success in this rapidly evolving space. And what we're talking about with portability is the design of your architecture, the design of how you build things in the cloud in a way that doesn't get you vendor locked in a way that you can use things like open source solutions and just the core cloud infrastructure primitives that you can run on any cloud provider, giving you movement across the space, giving you the ability to easily scale into a multi-cloud strategy or pursue different aspects of a multi-cloud strategy, and the ability to do so with less cost, more efficiency, less cloud waste, so why aren't people just doing this from the get-go then? Why, why, why are we having to educate on this topic? Because there's an overpowering narrative that really just tells the exact opposite. It says that doing so is going to make it way harder for you and way more complex. And sure, there are certain ways that you could be building your architecture that that does end up being harder and more complex. And there's many cases where it doesn't. And you should be closed off to the idea. When we think about startups, for example, who just want to pay the extra for managed services because they want to go to market faster, I work with startups who built amazing products, who went to market as fast, and they had a portable strategy from the beginning. So it's about consideration of what your resources are for doing so. It's about thinking of things like Automation tooling, you have Ansible, you have Terraform. You have these things that plug into the APIs that all of us cloud providers have. It's a methodology. And even if you're using managed services for a certain provider in the beginning, as you grow, as you scale, as your business needs change, what's your ability to change out of your current situation? And this is where portability is a strategy for where you can have that agility right, where you can move around, and that's the point I'm making, is that you can future success yourself that way. It doesn't have to be harder. The narrative says it is, and this narrative is very popular. I see it in blog posts, I see it at talks and conferences like this. I've sat through them before, where they said, don't do that, what you need is just more and more managed services. I've seen it in Twitter threads, where they said, nope, extract all of it, managed services. There's just a lot of that narrative and what people say and what happens in practice doesn't always match up from my experience. And I'm just speaking from my frame of reference 
It is not the only frame of reference. There are other frame of references out yeah. there, and mine is not more authoritative than theirs. Mm -hmm. But in my frame of reference, which is one that includes organizations who bought the promise that these managed services were the way to go, mm -hmm. it did not serve them well. And by the time they're talking to me and my team, it's for help getting out of that and to migrate out of that. And then that's the work we go, is to help them do things in a way that's more portable. So that's my frame of reference, mm -hmm. and that's where I'm coming from with that. And I've even heard this narrative go as far to say that what I'm talking about is extreme. This is the word that they used. What does that mean exactly? Are we extremist because we want to move around the cloud space, because we want a greater degree of scale, and because we want total control and data sovereignty over our environments? I don't know. I don't know what that means to say that this is extreme. I don't know why they would go as far to say that, but when you go through that content, it just dwindles back down to more managed services. That's your solution. And it also positions organizations where they're spending cycles trying to build in a way to make it work with a platform and how it's constructed. And quite frankly, I think that's backwards. I think platforms, us cloud providers, should make our services so simple and easy to plug into that you just focus on building how you want to build and how you want to innovate, and it should be a really easy plug into a platform, and it just works with us. And one of the things you touched on was the 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 fact that you know things can change. You know, so providers may change prices. You know, your requirements might change. So, I really like the point you made about the um, the, the commoditization of the cloud, and that clearly was another one of those light bulb moments for the audience. Um, in fact, a gentleman came up to me afterwards and said, "Yeah, that's kind of yeah, that's how it should be," and I think that's probably where it's going. So. Um, I really like that point. Anything to add on that on that commoditization side of things and the way we should be way we should be looking at cloud technologies moving forward. Right. The idea of commodi of commoditization being that the only thing distinguishable between the resources is the brand name. You should be able to swap these out for other services that are a better fit for that particular workload. You should be able to diversify your workload based on the right tool for the job and commoditizing your cloud providers enables you to do that. A portable strategy enables you to do that. So it's, about, it's just about abstracting, isn't it? That layer away from the building blocks of the cloud platform and enabling you to be able to build wherever you like, to move your solution from one platform to the next, depending on how your requirements might, might change, right? Not necessarily. It's about not locking yourself to one provider and thinking that you can only do things this one way of doing it. Okay. All right, the selling point for managed services is that it abstracts away the underlying resources, so you don't have to worry about managing those. You can just focus on your applications, your business, your end users. But with all of the open source tooling out there, we have infrastructure as code, right? Terraform, you have config management tools, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, you have Kubernetes, which it's interesting, a lot of the narrative out there around why you should never do this, don't do portable, use managed services, they love to bring up Kubernetes as an example, it's this difficult, crazy thing, and we'll save that debate for another time. Yeah. But Kubernetes is something, right, that does all the heavy lifting for you in terms of managing the underlying resources, that is an abstraction. And when you look at it as something that does the work for you, rather than you're doing the work for it, right? So you can have, you can set things up in a way to where you're abstracting all the heavy management lifting of these resources and even version control them. Mm -hmm. You can have a strong GitOps strategy where you version control everything from the infrastructure resources to the software stacks running on them, mm -hmm. and then your application running on top of that down to a real narrow science here. And then you're using your familiar Git repository mm -hmm. that you're most familiar with, building your application, the same security, the same access controls. You have a lot of flexibility here. And doing that, not always of course, but typically, that's enabling of a better security posture. 
And where I'm going with this is I've seen this quite a bit before where people just go on demand of services and just assume, okay, security's good, or they'll do things like put their workload in a VPC and go, okay, that's secure, yeah. and just get kind of sloppy with it. Versus when you're doing what I'm talking about, it's more enabling to have a more unified security approach, especially when you're using GitOps and you can enforce things like policy as code. When you can do so many checks just in the automation pipelines and you can have a unified approach to how you manage security across all your different resources and your different providers, you will typically have a more conscious and more aware and more documented security posture. Which is another, again, that's another area we could make a separate video on probably on the on security, security best practices and posture. But no, that's been really interesting. So for somebody watching this who's, uh, who likes the idea, loves what you're talking about here, where's the best place to start then? Any resources you can point people to? Or where would you start off on this, uh, on this learning more about the idea of portability and designing for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the initial starting point is to look at what you have today yeah. and identify your points of vendor locking because it's going to be different for everyone. If you can't identify a point of vendor lock-in, ask yourself why. Right, there may be a very specific reason for that particular workload that you're not interested in or for whatever reason can't decouple from right now, but just keep the thought for the future of how you want to. If the answer is, I don't know why, I think somebody just told me to do that, investigate more, and then from there, Look at what is the functionality that is provided by that, and then what's out there that can replace that. When you have, for example, an open source equivalent or something similar, then you can start looking, okay, what does this look like to deploy from infrastructure as code or from a different provider, and just kind of work your way out from there. That's brilliant. Billy, it's always educational talking to you. I feel like I've, I feel like I've learned something, even despite sitting through your talk already, so that's been really, really good. Um, is it okay for me to suggest that people contact you if they've got any ideas they wanted to discuss maybe around this, get some advice? Absolutely. Excellent, and where can we find you? Where's the best way of getting in touch with you? LinkedIn. LinkedIn, right, okay, <laughs> reach out on LinkedIn. Billy, it's been a pleasure talking to you. All the best, and uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate it, take care.